So it is currently four in the morning as I am recording this review and I want to start off by letting you all know that what I am about to say in this review and breakdown is my uh, is my opinion, full blown and some of the most honest feedback you will ever hear from me. Because as of right now, I am currently so unbelievably outraged as to how much I hated and disliked this episode and finale of The Book of Boba Fett. I have never on this channel said that I have openly hated something more than I've just disliked certain things. But I am coming out here right now to tell you all right off the bat, this is maybe by far some of the worst Star Wars I have ever seen in my entire life. From the original trilogy, to the prequel trilogy, to the sequel trilogy, to the TV shows, to the books, to the comics, to the games, to any Anything Star Wars related, this season finale for the Book of Boba Fett is truly awful in every way. And I'm going to say this right now, just as I get it out of the way, I don't have anything against the guy, and I know he's a talented filmmaker. Robert Rodriguez, you should not be directing Star Wars ever again after this episode. This was truly some of the worst directing I think I've ever seen in my entire life for a television show or just anything, period. And guys, Everything I'm saying right now very much hinges on the fact that I'm the one currently hearing myself say this. I have not heard anyone else yet as of me recording this video right now give their thoughts and opinions on this episode. So for all I know, everybody loved it and I'm the only one who disliked it. But for the life of me, I could not get through this entire episode with just without just cringing as so much of what happened during this episode to the point where I'm not even kidding, I had the thought, I had the thought of turning it off, of wanting to turn off the episode and not see any more. So yeah, if this review and breakdown is a little longer than any of the other episodes that I've done, it's, it's for good reason because the, there's really not much to talk about, but at the same time, I've got so much to say about so many of the things that I just, I just could not stand in this episode. So starting off, we see our group of characters all get together in the sanctuary, or what's left of it after it was blown up by the Pikes. They reconvene to organize a strategy as to what their next move will be, which is to currently hold out in the sanctuary instead of Jabba's palace. We then get a scene of our boy Cad Bane showing up in the place where the Pike leader was held up in along with the mayor Mokshais. Not much really happened here in this scene other than Cad Bang being let known some of the details regarding Boba Fett not knowing that it was in fact the Pikes who killed the Tuscans and framed the bikers who he got his revenge on for but didn't know at the time. We then cut to the skies of Mos Espa as out of nowhere an X-Wing flies in and I kid you guys not, I was getting a little worried as I saw this flying in because obviously we knew who it would be but thankfully my worries were brought down as we find out that as the ship lands in Pelimoto's hangar, out comes Grogu who at first I thought, wait, there's no way he's actually flying that in there but then I realized, oh wait. R2 is there, so of course he was the one who flew him back to Tatooine. I was a little worried that it would be Luke showing up again because I was hoping that he wouldn't take away from the episode and just leave it to Boba and everybody else. As the gang all set themselves up around the town in various different areas, covering all three of the different quadrants, which by the way, I didn't catch it at first, but I will give this episode this, it was very funny that they happened to put Chrysanthemum in the Trandoshan quadrant, and <laughs> that was just very funny to me, I'm not gonna lie. And then, look who decides to show up yet again, it's Cad Bane, but now, this time, face to face with Boba, and guys, I'll be honest again, this was probably maybe one of the best scenes in the entire episode, just the tension-filled atmosphere as these two stare each other down as they talk through how this is going to go down, it just felt like a classic western tussle that you would see in old western movies and TV shows. As they both split off, we then get the first motion of the Pikes and other quadrants moving in on Boba and his forces as he, the gang of mods get turned on, Chrysanthemum gets turned on, as well as the two Gamorrean guards in their sector who literally get thrown off a cliff to their deaths, which I thought was so brutal. On the other side of things, in Boba and Mando's corner, they are surrounded by more Pike soldiers and talk about how they are going to get through this with their own plan until... Until the start of the downfall of this episode begins with, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say it, this stupid character that, honest to God, should never have been put in this show. For the next three and a half minutes, I had to listen to this idiot 
and the, who is the mayor's right-hand man, just spew his awful and cringy dialogue and ruin a cool scene between these two characters. And it's all because Robert Rodriguez, for some reason, thinks he's filming a kid show right now. Thankfully, though, both Boba and Mando come out of nowhere on their jetpacks, shooting up the entire place in cool and badass form, killing many of the pikes who only then to find out that there are too many as they start getting shot up to the point where their armor can only hold on so much. And out of nowhere comes the people of Freetown to the rescue, who we probably assumed were going to come after what happened in the last episode. We even see Chrysanthemum come out badly injured after being sworn by Trandoshans, and he gets rescued by Boba and his forces. And then comes what I thought would have been a very cool entrance to a new enemy, and that we get two giant-looking droidica looking droids with shields just like the ones in the prequel trilogy from the droid army attacking our group of characters and guys when i say i'm not kidding for the next 10 or so minutes we get arguably some of the most terribly directed action scenes and terrible dialogue from characters and stupid decisions in all of star wars for these 10 minutes or so i was legit flabbergasted as to what i was watching the stupidity on screen of all these characters and the dumb and cringy dialogue coming from characters like Pelimoto, who again, I'm going to say it because it needs to be said, ruined this episode with her stupid attempt at trying to act out comedy and humor, which only ruins every scene that she was in. If I could count how many times characters in these next 10 or so minutes kept shooting the shields on these droids, I might actually be a billionaire because it was getting so ridiculous to the point where I was just like, you know what, all these characters de deserve to die at this point because this is just ridiculous. Oh yeah, by the way guys, Grogu shows up with Peli and him and Mando meet for the first time in in a while, and it's maybe arguably the worst possible situation that they could have met in. I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't believe it, man. This was just so bad to watch. But then, finally, 36 minutes into this hour-long episode, we get what we were all waiting for to see ever since it was first introduced in the beginning of the show was Boba Fett riding the damn Rancor. This was maybe the coolest scene in the entire episode. And look, there is no arguing here. This was badass, and this was cool. I liked seeing this play out on screen, even if it did take forever for this Rancor to take down these two overly powered droids who, in the end, you might as well have called them the big bads of this episode since Cad Bane barely shows up at all in, in any of the runtime. So in time, we find these two droids get taken out by the Rancor and Mando using his Darksaber, but also we do get a scene of Grogu using the Force to help... Oh, wait. No, I'm kidding. He, he doesn't actually do anything. He just he just f force pulls something out of the droids as as a gag like, oh, my God, man, guys, the, the entirety of the sequence with these two droids took up 13 minutes of screen time and yet it felt longer. Oh, and then look who decided to show up yet again out in like just out of some random corner in the town. It's Cad Bane uh, facing down Boba Fett on the Rancor, blasting it with a flamethrower, and then we find ourselves in a position to where a lot of people were waiting for this scene of these two dueling, dueling it off in with their guns this time. And shocked to probably nobody out there, Cad wins the fight in the shootout. But he does get cocky to the point where he literally walks up to Boba and Boba gets the upper hand on him and kicks him out from under his legs and stabs him with the Tuscan spear he made killing Cad Bane. And again, I won't lie to you guys here, this scene kind of disappointed me on the level that everything that came before this just depressed me so much that I didn't feel anything when I watched the scene happen. If anything, I felt so much more frustrated because this is a character that everybody loves so much and it's like, did you really just kill him off in that way that quickly after bringing him into live action? I'm not saying that it didn't feel earned that Boba killed him. It's the idea that you brought him into live action like this for maybe not even 10 minutes of screen time and that was it. But the last scene on screen of him just show just shows some type of button that keeps repeatedly beeping that could indicate that maybe he is still alive, but we won't know for certain, I guess, for now. We then get to another god-awful scene of all the people uh, of Boba's forces who fought off the pikes shooting at the Rancor as he's climbing through all these buildings that they, for some reason, didn't see Boba Fett riding earlier and think that now because he's not riding it, it just makes the Rancor an enemy, followed by some more 
cringy dialogue from Pelimoto and the mayor's right-hand man. Thankfully, again, this scene is saved by showing us Grogu using the Force to put the Rancor to sleep, which is a very interesting Force power that we don't see too often in Star Wars. And so it is cool that Grogu seems to have that ability learned. We then cut to the hideout where the Pike leader, the mayor, and the other faction leaders are hiding out as they try to figure out what to do now that they've lost. And guess who decides to show up considering she wasn't also, she was also absent for a good chunk of this episode near the end, and that's Fennec, who in violent, violent fashion kills everybody to the point where she even hung a guy by the neck. She hung the mayor by the neck on screen. I mean, look, that, that is, damn woman, that that is just badass. I, I, I loved every second of that. That was dope. We then close off the episode showing Boba and Fennec as they walk the streets, seeing everybody prosper now that the war is gone and all the other crime factions are written of from the planet and Mos Espa. We also see Mando and Baby Yoda flying off in the N1 Starfighter, probably on their way to Mando Season 3, which we will be getting this December of this year. So yeah, guys, that was the finale of The Book of Boba Fett. I hope whoever is watching this right now, if you did enjoy this finale, my hat's off to you. I really, truly mean that because you will not convince me otherwise, even after a second watch, that this finale in any way was good. We can always agree to disagree on a lot of things, but as of right now, I will firmly stand by that this show that not only is this the worst episode of the show, but this is maybe some of the worst Star Wars I've ever seen on screen from a television show or a movie. It doesn't really matter. Also, factor that in that Robert Rodriguez's directing is so unbelievably bad here to the point where, and I was so worried that this would happen, but it felt like I was watching one of his Spy Kids movies because it really showed how much he didn't understand what he was doing and the type of show that he was making. I'm being dead serious, man. Robert Rodriguez, I don't think you should be directing Star Wars anymore after this episode. I think you've proven to me that you don't understand what it is to direct Star Wars. Even after your one episode in The Mandalorian Season 2, which I'll admit it was a cool episode, but here with Boba Fett, you just, you fell off with all three of your episodes that you directed. I just, they were probably the worst episodes, and I, I just could not get on board with anything that you did in this episode. It was just so bad. Yes, is Star Wars for kids? Of course it is, but it's not so much entirely for kids to the point where you had to actually make it seem like I was watching a show for little children. I mean, it was embarrassing. I honest to God don't know if I want to watch this episode for a second time, but I know I probably am, but it'll be a painful watch, th that's for sure. And oh, by the way, there is a post credit scene showing off Cobb Vanth in the back to tank of Jabba's palace as it looks like he's about to get surgery from the same mod who helped fix Fennec in one of the earlier episodes. So with that being said, that probably implies that he is going to live after he got shot by Cad in the last episode. But honestly guys, there's really nothing more to say other than I was just so thoroughly disappointed and frustrated with this finale and now when I wake up in the morning, I will be so interested to see what so many people had to say about this episode. So when you guys all get a chance to see this review and breakdown, I want to hear what you all think of this episode. Down below in the comment section please comment down below what you thought please keep it respectful as much as possible as long as we have a conversation about it and we can disagree or agree on certain things and if you like what i had to say in this video be sure to drop a like on this video review and subscribe if you did enjoy i am definitely looking forward to mandalorian season 3 when it comes out later on in this year so guys i hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and a fantastic rest of your week and i will see you all in the next one